this movie is like a golden oldie, a golden oldie. Um, it's probably Steph's favorite, probably right now. Steph, am I right? Out of yeah, all the about. my favorite. Ahead, Steph, dig, yeah, dig into it. <laughs> so we're gonna be talking about Scream. Mm, that's a classic, don't, by the way. Don't pick up the phone. Don't pick it up. Don't pick it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> Steph, what do we know about this screen? We, the way that I, I think about it, the way it's being interpreted, they're saying that it's a reboot. I don't know if it's a continuation. They keep, they call it Scream, but is it called Scream 5? This is the, the I think unofficial, the toss up, yeah. unofficial. So, when we think about this movie, this movie premiered. And there was a lot of excitement, a lot of buzz behind it, only because they're going to be reintroduce- reintroducing the OG's um, crew that's coming back. We're talking mm-hmm. about Sydney Prescott. We're talking about uh, Deputy Dewey. We're talking about Gail Weathers. So you talk about the OGs that are back. Now, when we're thinking about new characters that are being introduced, we're talking about relationships, the relationships and the connections. That's where the foundation of this movie is. So taking it back, let's go back to part one. We're going back to screen one. So we have the killings going back to basics. So Scream 5 really took the killing and made it the center of this movie. Really did. And it it, it was more simplistic. It was more cutthroat. It was straight to the point. And it was just something that I like. I enjoyed this movie just because it just it was like an homage to Scream 1. That was for me. Yeah, they reinvented like the slasher flicks, you know. Absolutely. The, the time, Just the going 90s. back to the basics. And, you know, when thinking about how they use the relationships to as a reason for the reason for them to come back into town. So if you haven't had the chance, spoiler alert, Dewey dies. That's one of the yeah. main highlights that Deputy Dewey dies in this movie. So, so one of them had to die. One of them had to. But it won't be Neve Campbell. <laughs> we don't know. That's the thing. We don't know if there's space. We don't know if there's space for this to continue on to another set of series. Yeah. If she didn't die in three, she ain't gonna die in this. She, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so thinking about the plot, we have to think about how each character is developed, right? So Nev Campbell, Sydney Scott, main character, she originally dated Billy Loomis. Billy Loomis was one of the characters and the main killers in part one. Now, in this series, Billy Loomis has a daughter. <laughs> we, don't, we don't even know how that came about. They didn't really explain it. It seemed like it was something of an affair. We don't know the real identity of the mom, but mm-hmm. we know that Billy Loomis is the father. Now, the main character, Sam, she is also replacing Sydney, uh, Sydney's uh, place. So she is the one that's in okay. the center of that. So at this point, now we're focusing on her story. Now, a lot of mirror imaging going on. Sydney Prescott and Sam, Billy Loomis's daughter, they both are dating the killer. Deputy Dewey, he called it from the beginning. He was like, are you the killer? We have to keep an eye on you. We have to make sure that we're not repeating history again. But yet, history repeats I'm itself. I'm stabbed him in the face for right? Yeah, it is me. It is me. Boom. Damn. You know what I mean? So it seems like when it comes to these the OG relationships, and they even said it, when uh, Jamie Kennedy's um, ne- nieces, and nephews. nieces and nephews, when he had in part three, he had a whole video just as a, acting as a tutorial to tell you and explain that the rules are changed. And it's, it changed in Scream 5 or Scream or however you want to call this Ruby, this Ruby uh, reboot. You can edit that. Reboot. Reboot. <laughs> so for Reboot. me, it's, it's about finding out those relationships and making it seem like that's not really there. When I when I mean that is that Sydney Prescott, she's now married. She has children. She does everything humanly possible to stay away from Woodsboro. Everybody keeps coming okay. back, and it's just all yeah. these circumstances come back. Dewey dies. My man goes. She, she has to come. She has to come back. Gail Weathers, another mm-hmm. one, cannot stay away from a story. So you're thinking about mm. all these different stories and how they intertwine. What's, what is, what's King Karim call them? The micro stories. Micro stories. Micro stories. <laughs> the micro stories. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of these micro stories are really at the center of how this story came to be. And, mm-hmm. you know, one homage to one of the characters, Wes, 
was a dedication to the you know the actual director self West Craven West who, Craven, pa- who yeah. West passed away in 2015 who R. was R. originally R. R. yeah that this film was now done without him you know and the reins had to be taken on by two other new directors and yeah. it, I mean they did justice yeah. it was another homage to West Craven that had a uh, uh, Elm Street. In the beginning, in of the, the beginning movie, of the movie, as they well. show Elm Street. Oh shit, I missed that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the, okay, when cool. they're zooming into town, they see the the the, the street sign. It says Elm Street. Elm Street on it. Wait, so that, does that mean like Scream and like Freddy are like in the same movie now? Well, Elm no, Street, right? remember, no, <laughs> but remember Wes Craven directed both. You know, <laughs> I know, I know. Not I know. so you already know so that he make he makes a funny. You That's never a joke. You never know. You movie. never you never know. I mean, you never know. They listen, did listen they here. Did Freddy and Jason, so by the other day, right? Imagine. Ghostface what versus Freddy. Oh uh, no, no, no. I don't even want to get into that. Well, I, I, I wanna know. Is, I, I love the screen movies, but like every time I watch the screen movies, a, a scary movie, scary movie always uh oh, what is going ruined on? it for me. I have no. I can't even hear the buttons. He pressing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, party, hold on. Uh, I think. Wait, you dirty, pressing, dirty wants to get dirty with it. Hey, you guys hear that? Okay. Don't even make you undress like porn dancers waiting at the front door for an answer. Hey, yo, I'm sick of artificial MCs. Like, like silicone titties. Don't even test because I'll make you. <laughs> When I'm you done, okay, done. What? <laughs> Wait, what are we doing? What? My, man, my man went left field. And didn't it was a scary movie. It was a scary movie. Scary movie Some, bits. Uh, somebody <laughs> take somebody take the soundboard away from him. <laughs> <laughs> we tried. He brought it. Hey, this is my show. This is my show. <laughs> Party, hey, go ahead. Go ahead. No, what else? I mean, not like you played a scary movie soundtrack, but like uh, it, this scream always reminds me of scary movie. Like I yeah. think, like you know. With uh, Marlon Wayans, like the, <laughs> these are the rules. These are the horror movies. These are the horror movies. That's your run, you know, like that. And then like over the over the Doofy, I just I, over the Doofy <laughs> from the scary movies. Like right. I just see the scary movie characters. Him now, yeah. I just can't like I like I Doofy. Yeah, you remember? But I just think of the other guy from yeah. But meanwhile, movie, at so the end of that funnier. movie, he was the fucking killer. <laughs> he was crazy, right? So good, Insane. so good. But uh, what are the yeah. odds? Yeah, yeah, it was good. I liked it. It was cool. Nope. Yeah, it was, it was good. a little reboot for sure. The killing in the in the hospital with the where he killed Doofy with the two knives and he oh. jacked them up. That was right, that was right at the spinal column. No. Was, well, we have we have a theory about done. that. Before we go on, Fight Jesse, go ahead, Jesse. Girl. Oh my God, that's that's a lot, man. Um, so guys, what do we give this movie? Let's start with Steph. Um, One out of ten. I'm giving it ten out of ten. 10 out of 10 because for me I I I I'm, I she's a fan she's a fan I'm a fan oh, that, that I'm a fan that hurt my soul right there I know oh, yeah. I know I know but uh, it's cuz I'm a true let, fan let's talk let's talk let's talk hold on Drake hold on Jake no watch that for me it's also it goes back to a time where I remember my innocence and cut school. I cut school so, and so it's your it's your oh nostalgia of getting it's you my nostal- the Yeah, itself. that's really not what the it is. Movie itself is your nostalgia. There you go. There you <laughs> go. Nostalgia. So I'll give I, I give it a ten because it it does something for me in a nostalgic way. So yeah. Okay. For sure. That's cool. Uh, Party J, who was ready to go left field. <laughs> I'm seven. Seven. It was good. It was good. Definitely. Okay. Uh, I can't. It was. Uh, you know. Typical horror movie. I like the killings. I probably go seven. If I go middle numbers, I go seven and five. But we're gonna go whole numbers here, and I'm not rounding to an eight. But uh, <laughs> seven, seven's a good number. Okay, Dre. Um, I give it a eight or eight, eight and a half only because uh, the killings were brutal. I love the killings. It was like just senseless killings, and it was like it was like remorseless. The, the killers were just killing, stabbing people left and right. With no remorse, and uh, it was just crazy. And also another Easter egg that was happening: uh, the car scene. There was a car scene where the, the car was revving up. That was another tribute to Wes Craven for the movie Christine, because he co-wrote it okay. with uh, he co-wrote it with uh, what's the other character? Uh, uh, John Carpenter. Yeah, was John, Carpenter. John Carpenter. He wrote that with uh, John Carpenter, Christine. I think so. I so think had, so. yeah, because they had the the old school car Christine. revving up, revving up, and then boom. I thought I thought the car was gonna drive into the wall and pin the guy, but the dude just came. That would have been good too. Right in the neck. Like he was just 
And the fact that it just brought horror back to basics, it was just like very good. Because a lot of these horror movies now, like, eh, they're like, eh. I'm not. Mm. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? They're not pleasing. They're not. You know, it's it's. I don't know. Like this was like straight up non CGI. It was just straight up minimal CGI. But it was just the killing was brutal. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. It's the CGI, man. It's it's taking over, and we love it. But I think it's so to over the point the where you got to say to yourself, yeah, yeah you want to slow it down just a little bit, you yeah. know. And this was it. But um, Jess, what do you think? Oh, you guys aren't gonna like me. <laughs> Try oh, me. Boy. Try where, me. Where's my bounce button? Where's the mute button? Where's the mute button? Kick. <laughs> five point three. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna give it a five. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna minus, give it a five. That's a minus five from Steph's ten. Yeah, I, no, but Je- no, but just, Jesse and I, I have an understanding, so. No, yeah. Listen, uh, for me. Um, like yeah, they 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 didn't bring anything new to it, you know. Uh, I'm, I've never been a slasher movie fan in the first place, oh. but I can still try to be as biased as uh, non biased as I can about a movie. And just I went into it. The first Scream is a classic because there was no other movie that was like Scream before, it, you know. But this is five, the fifth movie in. I don't see anything new. I don't see anything innovative. I don't see the story being moved forward. I kind of really can't stand the trope where in order to continue a story, you need to add a family member of a main character in order to keep things relevant. You know, so and and I feel like that's exactly uh, with what they did with um, with uh, Melissa Barrera's character. Um, uh, yeah, I just I just don't don't feel like it added anything new, and I've kind of felt like David Arquette, like he, he was kind of like I'm done with this franchise. If you kill me off, I can't come back to no more movies, so I'm done. <laughs> I'm done with it. You know, right, right, right. Um, I just I just don't feel like it brought anything new, or that anybody's story got better or more developed or anything like that. It just didn't do anything for me. I'm gonna have to reverse so words, I'm gonna have to reverse, reverse this car. That, reverse that car. I'm reverse this Use car, the reverse bro. reverse reverse car. I'm using the reverse car today. A reversible five. A reversible five. It's half I'm away. away. <laughs> just to piggyback so on can... just to piggyback on what Jesse was saying, I, I understand that the trope of the story um, kind of seems repetitive, but again, that's that's what horror slasher movies do. You know, when you have something that works, people tend to try to reuse that formula. And again, you're you're using the you're, you're mirroring the images, right? So we know that in Scream Three, they use Sydney's half brother, right? He was the killer. Now in number four, it was Sydney's cousin. Now in five, we're talking about Billy Loomis's daughter, the, the original killer. So now right. I understand why but, it happens but but there's but there's also the thing that the killer's motivation was super weak they were just like oh we just want I to agree. keep it going there i agree to be a killer. Yeah. i agree okay? i agree that was there. there was no motivation and the fact that Dewey was killed by a 16 year old girl who was able to stick him with nope. knives on both sides no nope. no nope. no nope. No, listen. No, this, because the no, only other killer, no. the only other killer was Jack Quaid. Let me tell no, you something. No, no, no. Listen, no, listen, bro, no, listen, listen to the theory. My theory is because there were uh, there were three killers. There's three remember, killers. They, they said they found each other on Reddit. Three so there's a whole following of there's Ghostface. a third killer. That was our theory. There is a third killer. And the third killer was taller. No, there is no implication of that. Exactly. It will be in the next or, movie. Or or. or Crump, no, but that's the thing that that means that you have to retcon it, okay? Because as we know, by the end of the movie, we only have two killers. You're insinuating that there's a third killer. There's no valid proof, and if there if there it was, then there has to be another movie to validate. Oh, it's gonna be another I'm talking movie. about within right. This movie, so it's been greenlighted. The second movie, movie. Yeah, yeah, it's been greenlighted. It has been. But until then, throughout this movie, and based with what this movie is alone, we only got two assumptions of who the killer is. The girl or Jack Quaid. Mm-hmm. Okay, those are our only two killers. And Jack Quaid was there in the hallway with them. So he wasn't the one who gutted Officer But there's no way that the 16-year-old did it either. Girl. Right, the girl was outside. The girl was outside. And this guy was taller, and he was like, it was an honor. No, no, we don't know anything about the girl because she wasn't in the scene. 
Okay. Because she wasn't in the scene, we don't know what she did. We don't know where she went. We don't know what she was doing. So that's an assumption, again, that you're making. So as of right now, the, the what the accurate assumption of the movie currently is, is that it was the girl who killed Doobie. That's bullshit. Who killed Doobie. No, that's bullshit. I don't, I, don't I, don't I don't believe it. It is, it is bullshit for her. Of course. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Reverse card. Reverse card. Reverse card. Reverse card. Reverse that theory. Reverse that theory. Bullshit. That's crazy. I'm sorry. You got to reverse your theory because you don't have any other grounds to say that there was a Third yes, killer. because There's they had a, in the movie. They, they met each that. other on Reddit, and they have a whole following, a whole cult following of Goldfish Killer. So, so what? So what? That yeah. doesn't mean that there's so a third person involved. Be, it means that there were other people that were interested. They made it phone calls. They made a phone call. Like, Yo, I need you to be at the, at the hospital. Got him like a fish, and and, you're, you're, and and the guy had a bulletproof vest. <laughs> Got him like a fish. <laughs> if, <laughs> Got him like a fish. <laughs> the guy had a bulletproof vest when he if shot that him. Turns, it had to be like a cop or something. Only one of the movie. But like I said. Based on this movie alone, it was only the two killers. Of course. And then, and then, where, the hell should, where the hell they get a bulletproof vest from? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, where, where the hell they get a bulletproof vest? It must vest? be a cop. It must be somewhere. Another a follower, a Ghostface follower. But then the thing is, we also talked about that there the was son, another... Guy, uh, <laughs> probably uh, son, uh, the other killer from the first movie. It could be that Shaggy too. We don't know. Shaggy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it could have been Sha- Shaggy. 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 Shaggy that showed up and no, killed him. Oh my God. <laughs> No, but the, <laughs> but the thing is, is that with that, that was another thing that we also mentioned too, that they never revealed the, the, the identity of the mom. They never revealed the identity of the dad. So we were thinking maybe they were part of it as well. You know, that was something that we're always trying to figure things out. But I know Jay figured out the killer really, really quickly in the movie. Right. And I did too. Like I figured oh, yeah. it out right away. My, yeah. My did you figure it out too, Jesse? figure it out. My uh, my fiance figured it out before we even watched the movie. Yeah, before yeah. we even saw the movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, she it? And we just saw. No, she didn't guess. She had a very educated guess, and and as soon as she told me who she thought the killer was, I was like, yeah, that's the killer. And then it, what also disappointed me is that it turned out being exactly who we thought it was. So that's why it takes even more away for for me because I'm like, we haven't even seen the movie. We just saw the poster. We already know who the killer is. Right. I right. thought it was gonna be three. And I had it as the twins and the china. Like not giving it as like a uh, Jack Quaid. Then one of the twins got shot. I was like, oh no, it's the Chena and Jack Quaid. I like I, I switched out like right away there. And like once one of them got hit, I was like, they can't be both. It's either one or none. It's either both of them or none of them. So once mm-hmm. that happened, I was like, okay. I thought it was the Asian chick because she kind of always looked like a little sussy the whole movie. I was like, you're acting too sus for no reason right now. <laughs> you're looking a little sussy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Hey yo! Hey yo! Whoa. Hey yo! Hey man, yo. sus son. That's man, sus son. Hey, right, we got like two, two like a minute left. So I guess we're gonna start. But yeah, up. I mean, so so overall though, you guys recommend this movie, right? We do. I do. If you're a fan, go see it. If you yeah, if, if you, you, if you watch fan, all of them, yeah, watch it. Yeah, watch it. yeah it doesn't if you're hurt a nobody. Fan, go see it. Yeah, for sure. No, if you're a fan, go definitely go see it. 